Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth. That is Derek Young. And we come to you the day after a pretty disappointing loss for the K-State basketball team. They fall to Nebraska on Sunday afternoon in a home game where the crowd was pretty solid. Now, a lot of Nebraska fans there, probably more than I anticipated. Felt like more mm-hmm. Nebraska fans in Bramlage this year than there were Nebraska fans in Kansas City last year, which kind of surprised me. And K-State, it was a tale of two halves. They went out there in the first. They led at halftime. Maybe could have had a greater lead. There were some moments early on there where I just think there was some poor decision-making making by K-State. Uh, when you have David Gasson and Will McNair combined for three three-point attempts in the first half, that's not always a great combo. Uh, neither of them came particularly close to going in. And there were just some other moments where things were disjointed, but it felt like K-State was going to be able to, to continue on and find a way to win that game. But, man, shots did not fall at all in the second half. K-State only ends up scoring, I think, 12 points uh, in the second half, and they shot four of 30 from three over the course of the game. And probably the most disheartening stretch was early in the second half there where Nebraska was grabbing offensive rebound after offensive rebound. They end up totaling 22 in the game, uh, and that helped them get the 62-46 to win over K-State. Uh, one of, if not the worst, offensive game that Jerome Tang has had played under him at K-State. Uh, there are a lot of ways to take it. Obviously, I, I think that it, the loss is more indicative of greater problems this team has that are going to hamper them throughout the year. I don't think that they play smart basketball some of the time. But also there is the element that shots weren't falling, and that's the route that Jerome Tang uh, chose to take yesterday. So, D.Y., I'll ask you on your thoughts on what took place yesterday. Are there real problems with this K-State team, or is it just as simple as saying, hey, you didn't hit shots? It's probably somewhere in the middle. It always is. Like, <laughs> we, uh, there, we always have our instincts to really want to fly to one end of the spectrum when typically it's probably in between. Um, I understand what Jerome Tang was saying, and to a point, he's correct. So like when you go 16 of 60 from the field, a lot of it is that you're just not putting the ball in the bucket. Like you can even be playing poorly, and typically you're going to shoot better than 16 from 60 from the field. So he has a point. I think, and the fact that he was probably a little bit softer on his team, it seemed like to all of us. It's probably just because he thought that was the touch that was needed. So I'm not even going to criticize what he said or how he said it. I would just say that I thought there was probably a little bit more at play than just not putting the ball in the bucket. I think it's probably almost what Jerome Tang said in other games, where I think this team is just inconsistent right now. Can they break from that inconsistency? Um, that's still to be determined. They have the potential to do that. So I'm not completely folding on them for the rest of this year, but it's a very volatile team. You're talking about a team just lost at home to Nebraska by 16 points, had to take North Alabama into overtime, but also as a nice win over Villanova, a nice win over Providence. And though it may not look as good on paper, an impressive 15 point win against LSU and Baton Rouge. Um, especially considering the circumstances that surrounded that contest. So I just think this team continues to be inconsistent, and they need to solve that. Yeah, I think it it would appear that this team has the – and Drew said it yesterday on our, our instant reaction video after the game, but this team has a really high ceiling but also a really low floor. Last year's team, they had the talent and the pieces to where – you know, the floor for last year's team was was fairly high in, in all regards. I mean, the lowest point last season was probably the loss to Butler, but when you consider what this team had actually become, it was probably that road game at Oklahoma. Um, but none of those felt as bad as what happened yesterday for K-State. And uh, I think fans sent us some numbers about K-State last year when they shot under 20% from three in a game. It happened five times. They still went three and two in those games last season um, because that team was going to be able to overcome it because they had guys that could do things in other areas of the floor like Keontae Johnson, Naquan Tomlin, and Desi Sills. They could do things inside the arc. And Marquise Noel had great finishing ability. Right now, this K-State team, they just they lack the players 
that can get you over the hump if they're not making certain shots. And for some guys, it's from the outside. And it's also, you know, getting some of the uh, the tougher twos to fall. So uh, it's tough for K-State. Look, I, I, I see more negative long-term impacts from how this team played against Nebraska than I think some do. Um, but I also still think that this team is capable of greater things and being an NCAA tournament team. I just think that this is the the exact epitome of a team that you have to watch for the entirety of the season. And a couple of bounces or different nights of play are going to determine what this team is. If they're a tournament team, is like a six or a seven seed like we talked about last week, or if they're instead playing in the NIT or something. Um, they're just going to have to be able to come out. Now, the the one other thing, the margin for error for this team is gone. Like you have to finish off Wichita State and Chicago State now in the non-conference because if you drop another one, then you're looking at needing probably nine, ten wins in Big 12 play, um, and that might start to get tough to see where you're going to get those victories at if you're K-State. So um, I wouldn't panic too much, but I think – People need to be okay and start to realize that this team has flaws that just may not get fixed this year. And this may not be as good of a team as we thought they could have been at one point. Um, but people like me probably also need to realize that they're not going to be as bad as it feels like and seems like they might be after yesterday's outcome with Nebraska. I think that's all fair. Um, you know, and they're going to get Quez Glover back. And we thought they were going to be really good because of, they were also going to have Naquan Tomlin, which is no longer the case. I'm a little stubborn, a little I'm a little stubborn on everything because I still think we we're talking about having those guys. For the most part, I think we knew that who those guys were last year on December 18th. So I'm kind of going back for. I think Cam Carter and Tyler Perry are still dogs enough to where they can figure this out. So we'll we'll see who's right, who's wrong. Um, I do look at it, tend to look at it from a glass half full operation as well. And and I heck, I remember a week and a half ago, it might have been two weeks ago, we talked about this four game stretch of Villanova, LSU, Nebraska, Wichita State. You need to win three of them. I mean, that's still on the table technically. That is true, but I. I, I would look at it and say that of those games, I didn't have the home game with Nebraska as the, as the one on the radar that made sense. Is like you could maybe stomach that loss right. a little bit no, more. I, I think it was it was LSU or Villanova given the circumstances. But, yeah, but th- your but point th- still stands that this team in totality could still be what we kind of expected by the end of non-conference play. It's very similar to what we've seen from K-State football um, I, I, a few years ago where you just say, they got to maybe the record and the point we thought they'd be at. They just did it in a very roundabout and different way. Um, and so I guess that's that's a possibility here. Yeah, but you're you nailed it probably there at the end because I was saying if if you because if you're saying oh but we have a loss we didn't expect to have but that means you're also stealing a win that maybe you weren't anticipating. Yeah, yeah, that 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 is very true. And, and I guess you know at the end of at the end of everything, um, this you know may end up being. Uh, one of those games that we look back at the end of the year and and it's no maybe big deals, yeah. similar maybe to the that, Butler game last year. I was going to say, maybe the Nebraska game is the outlier like the Butler game was last year. I mean, and they had some duds last year too. You mentioned Oklahoma on the road. Mm-hmm. That was a bad Texas one. Texas Tech on the road, yeah. Texas Tech on the road, Butler on the road. Heck, the way – and I know they're good, but the way you collapsed at home against Texas, yeah. um, that has to be considered. And they basically no-showed at TCU in West Virginia. Yeah. Yep, that is true. Uh, that is very true. And, yeah. and most of those, they turned around and came back with good performances afterwards. Obviously, the Tech OU one, that's the only one that didn't happen, but that was short turnaround still on the road. But that bad loss to TCU, they turned around and beat Kansas the next time out. Um, now, and the one at West Virginia, I give them the pass for the loss at West Desi. Virginia last year. Desi wasn't there. You, n- nothing was going to come out of that game. And when you're missing your third or fourth best player, it is what it is. Uh, they they paid it all off in the end with the Elite Eight run and everything. So this team responds well. They've responded well this year uh, after losses. Um, that's That's been a consistent theme. And as much as people might think I sounded really down on K-State after yesterday, and I, I did, um, and I still am not totally high on them right now, 
I do think they come out and play really well against Wichita State on Thursday night because Wichita State is the perfect opponent for that where Wichita State's not as good as Nebraska. Um, they don't have players on the high end that can match what Nebraska can throw out there at you. And I just think for what we said, like B- Jerome Tang has his teams. They they bounce back really well after losses. And I think this team will be upset and will get after it. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I There are we, some we parts that feel- have pause. We also feel much would or feel much worse about this than maybe even a K State player or, or coach would, just because you kind of got smoked by a regional rival, right? Nebraska, the, the, you you just don't like losing to Nebraska as well, and you do it at home by sixteen. But if you put a different name there with the same resume, you we wouldn't have as bad a feeling. So it's. The fact that it's a Huskers kind of rips at us a little bit more than anyone else. Yeah, that is uh, that is very true. Uh, we'll see what happens with the Cats and how they bounce back from this point. But uh, yesterday was not a good day for them, and you know there are still some things that they need to get better at and they can improve upon. Even if you think you're capped at a certain point because of talent or whatever else it may be, there are still some things that they can uh, get better at. And I'm sure Jerome Tang will figure that out and, and see what it is uh, and get things going from there. But um, sometimes you have to take these lumps early in the season to address those problems and figure out what they are. This, this scheduling component, I don't think they have much autonomy over or personal authority over just because it was a series that was created yeah. before that they arrived in Manhattan. But, well, because here's what I'm going to say. Yes, the Go Big Red chants were loud at the end. And there was a few hundred Nebraska fans. I don't even think there were a thousand fans. And they were just loud for, for that many fans. And it was uncomfortable hearing that in Bramlage Coliseum, quite frankly. I Don't get me wrong. But I also think, like, that kind of goes back to, and maybe this is like Bruce Weber's fault. I kind of, I don't know. Or or the scheduling, with how they did it. I, I Look, the Nebraska series makes a lot of sense. I think it was a good idea. I'm glad they did it. But playing... Nebraska at in Bramlage on Christmas break, you're setting yourself up for them having a yeah. good road crowd because the students aren't here. You put all these GA seats on the open market because of it. That's easy to be gobbled up by a road team's fans, especially when it's Nebraska, who's known for traveling well, and it's like a two-hour drive. So yes, if you're going to have a home game over Christmas break, you can't do it against a team like Nebraska. Yes, that is a that is a a good thing, and probably a good nugget to end this thing on is this this date was set in stone. That's how these these major series and non con play get set. Um, and you look at how these games are structured. Look, look, I I don't love the timing of the K State Wichita State game just from a standpoint of a Thursday night on the twenty first. I you couldn't have found a way to do that on like you know a. I, I don't know. I think there's a better way to do that. You either do it earlier where uh, you still have people around or you do it on that weekend and hope you get a holiday crowd in there. Thursday, when people are probably like, well, we got to travel on Friday and Saturday. Why, we're going to have to go Thursday now to a basketball game. I don't like that. And there have been other elements of like the schedule that have been leftovers from either the Bruce Weber era or just that have been dictated by whatever else. Um, Big 12 Big East battle being one of them that I have not liked. I think what we have seen is Jerome Tang knows how to put a schedule together. He's obviously done that this year, um, and he's been smarter about it in in a lot of ways. Um, Last year, the one game that they were able to put their own touch on was the Cal game, and the Cal game was perfect. I mean, a lot of people can can kind of laugh at it and it's funny to hear Jerome Tang at different points last year say that's a game we we really wanted going on the road to play a terrible Cal team but they did really want it because it makes a lot of sense it is a road test against a power opponent that isn't going to be the most overwhelming team to face and you get to bring him back to Brandon yeah. and you do it at the right time the problem last year was the schedule was already put together and so K-State has to go to their dinky little flow hoops Thanksgiving tournament, thanks to Bruce Weber. And they have to turn around and they have this layoff and they don't get a game back at home to ease them into it. You play in that and you immediately are back on the road coming back from Thanksgiving break to play at Butler. 
I, I didn't like that. I think if you look at what a lot of teams do ahead of the Big 12 Big East battle, they play a game or two against a kind of easy into it by game opponent. That way your first game back into real action isn't on the road against a, you know, a solid opponent or a power opponent. And I think we'll continue to see that as we move forward. When Jerome Tang and his staff has full autonomy over the schedule, you're not going to have bad Sunday scheduling against Nebraska because yeah, that the schedule the scheduling aspect of it was pretty bad for that game. And that's not on Jerome Tang. That's on uh again Bruce Weber and and his staff for putting this series together. Yeah, and, and then I guess maybe a reason why you can't play that on the weekend. I, I, it's funny. I, I I spent all all day Saturday at Crown Center doing Christmas stuff, and I was going to the Crown Center and the, of the shops and the restaurants, and you got the Weston Hotel there. And I guess who I walked by? I walked by Shaheen Holloway, the head coach for Seton Hall, because Seton Hall played Missouri in Kansas City the following day, and Seton Hall beat Missouri yesterday. Uh, in Kansas City. So, and Seton Hall was up double digits most of the game. Uh, that's one of those that Missouri's probably looking around and, and thinking, man, this was a bad idea to play this game uh, in this moment. So, th- those are the kind of things to, to look at. And that should probably, you know, it doesn't excuse what happened yesterday for K State, but just like anything in, in sports and specifically college athletics, um, there can be a lot of ways to explain why something happened. And and these home and home contests that Jerome Tang put on schedule, I talked about Cal, Cal, kind of talk about LSU. He's doing it for the fans too, because next year now, look, Cal's getting better under Mark Madsen, yeah. so that's kind of a fun game. And LSU is probably not getting better under Matt McMahon. They might have a new coach next year. I don't know, but now because you're losing the, well, you already lost the the Big Twelve SEC challenge, but is the Big Twelve Big East battle still a thing next year? Probably, mm-hmm. but Kansas State will be on the road, I think. Yeah. More than likely, but now you're guaranteed home gains at least against high major opponents in LSU and Cal next year. Yeah, and I'm sure they'll they'll probably have some more up their sleeves to add and get going uh, as things move Neutral forward. Neutral site stuff too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, the, and you'll I mean you'll have a road game in Wichita at Coke Arena next year against Wichita State on the schedule. And, so you'll have and to do they, do, that. They, do they have our Thanksgiving tournament set yet? I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, I'm sure that will be announced but, at some point. Yeah, and some of those are in flux because I know the Maui and the Atlantis tournaments, the, you know, the two prestigious yeah. ones, they're, they're all like scrambling because they had their fields established well ahead of time, obviously. But now at conference realignment, now they got like three teams from one conference in their, yeah. in their event, which they're supposed to be able to avoid. Like I'm trying to think. <laughs> uh, well, year. so next year uh, there Iowa will be State two Big Maui. Twelve teams in the Maui with Colorado and Iowa State. <laughs> so, so yeah, so there, I think there might be some amendments coming. So we'll see. Yeah, uh, that'll be that'll be fascinating to look at. Oh, uh, could call. have been could have been three teams from the Big Twelve in there if uh, Brett had added UConn because they'll be in Maui next year too. Oh uh, yeah, don't don't roll that out. He's he's not done trying. I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, I better not tempt him right now. Uh, cause he'll probably give it a go, but, uh, not a good, not a good showing for K state yesterday against Nebraska. They'll get to try and turn it around on Thursday night in front of what should probably be a pretty good crowd at T-Mobile center in Kansas city against, uh, the worst team in the state of Kansas and the, the squad that everybody should have serious day distaste towards. So, uh, just like me with my younger brothers, I like to put them in their place. I don't like to let them win in anything I do with them. And uh, K-State and Wichita State should be the exact same way as the Cats try and uh, put little brother in their place. So uh, that will do it for this on K-State in Nebraska. Tie the bow, lock it away, forget about it, and uh, we'll move on. We'll have more later in the week about K-State and Wichita State. But this is also a big week on the football side of things. You can go over to K-State Online right now and get prep for signing day, which is coming. There's a signing day sale going on right now at On3, so be sure to get locked in, check all that out. And K-State keeps adding commitments, whether it's JUCO, high school, or transfer portal. It's coming from all over the place, and the best way to keep it all in order is with K-State Online, whether that's at On3 or right here on the YouTube. So for Derek Young, I'm Mason Voth. Thank you for watching K-State.